Now this top graph up here, it might represent the distance that an object has travelled over a certain amount of time. And so it could be any object, uh, I used a witch in some of the previous videos, but effectively what we're looking at is how the distance is related to time, and this one here is a distance time graph. And what we can take away from this is that the gradient represents the speed or the velocity of that object. So what we can see at the start is we have a sloping line, which means that as time goes on, their velocity is increasing. And then when there's a straight line, we've got a constant gradient, and that means there's a constant velocity. So that's really useful for many, many scenarios. But sometimes we want to look at something different, even though it might be about the same object. And here we can actually look at how the velocity, which is measured in meters per second, how that varies over time measured in seconds. So what we can do is plot the same data, but rather than looking at distance, we're going to be looking at velocity. Now, because we've got a sloping line upwards here, that means there's an ever-increasing velocity. And if this is increasing at a constant rate, what we get on the velocity time graph is a straight line that's going up. So that represents an increase in velocity. Effectively, at this time, they're travelling at a certain velocity. A small amount of time later, their velocity is increased. So we've got an increasing velocity. There's also a point when their velocity stays at the same value. So if we think about whatever value that might be, it doesn't change as time goes on. And therefore, what we can do is, uh, I'm just going to draw a horizontal line to represent that. And even though this is about the same data, the graphs look very different. So the bottom one is a velocity time graph. Now the gradient of this line, it represents the change in y divided by the change in x value. And this is really then a measure of how much the velocity is changing with respect to time. And we call that, if we're thinking about our normal kind of equations of motion, the change in velocity divided by time is the acceleration. And we can see here we've got a positive gradient, so that means we've got a positive acceleration, so something is getting quicker. We could always have a negative acceleration as something slows down. And when you've got a gradient of zero, it means there's no acceleration at a constant speed. But we also know that if we were to look at the velocity multiplied by the time, that is then actually the distance travelled. And in this case here, the area which is between the x-axis and the line, the area represents a distance travelled in a certain direction, which is what we call the displacement. So these are both really useful ways of visualising the motion of an object. It is a little bit tricky sometimes, and so, you know, just take care that you're looking at either a distance or a velocity time graph. Remembering, of course, that when you've got a velocity time graph, the gradient is now equal to the acceleration, and that tells you about how much you're, it's either increasing or decreasing its velocity, and the area is the displacement, the distance that that object has travelled in a certain direction. So uh, I've got a couple more examples below to actually kind of practice taking some data, reading the graph, and then using that in subsequent calculations.